my uh, early days, I started doing Muay Thai and I saw the elbow strike and said, if you're not using this elbow, you're an idiot. Like, yeah. it's the best weapon you've got in Muay Thai. And I'm here, and, I'm, and you see me going like this. Okay. So. Okay, okay, yeah. Oh, my fuck. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Boom, and a liver shot. Boom, good. Elbow shot, liver, good. Elbow shot, liver shot, good. Change over, change over. See, your turn, let's go. Elbow right and underneath. Oh, yeah. Boom, that's it, good. See, I opened up that, that hole, because it's hard to cover the head, hard to cover the head and the body at the same time. Boom, boom. Well, I was lunging with this leg, right? Yeah. I'm picking this leg up because, and I told you, growing up, sports, everything that I did, swinging a bat, you load up, throwing a ball, you load, and all that. Um, did you grow up playing any sports, or was this your sport? Um, and like, what inspired you to like do this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's a good question because actually that question is what was like that sliding door moment that yeah. sort of changed my life and went that direction. Because before this moment happened, I never even thought about fighting. Mm -hmm. So I grew up just you know, playing like soccer and then like Australian AFL, it's called football, like yep. the, you know, the handballs on the big field. And I, and I did surf lifesaving and surfing. Okay. And then I was uh, at school one day and a friend that didn't get invited to go camping was all upset and then pushed me and pushed and shoved and all of a sudden just boom, cracked me, hit, King hit me. I'm like, oh, okay, we're in a fight now. Like, and I'm, you know, I, didn't, I didn't know what I'm doing and then all of a sudden it got broken up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was all over. It was over before it even. He got one shot off for sure. I didn't get to hit him, but it was over pretty quick. And I remember riding my bike home, like just thinking, Fuck. I need to learn how to fight. You know what I mean? Just the fact happens Dang, again. No, I need okay. to learn how to fight. So that moment at 13 years old or 14 years old, or whatever it was, I was in that range bracket. I was like, it was just that like sliding door moment. Because before that punch, I never thought about joining a martial arts school. Yeah. I never thought about learning how to kick or box or do anything like that. I was surfing and my sisters were older than me and they all surfed. So it was like, I just, I'm a surfy. had long, yeah. long surfy hair. Follow suit, whatever. Just following that path. So then that happened to me and he, he was actually a boxer, this kid. So then I said to my dad, dad, I need to learn how to box. And my dad said, no, nah, it's a mugs game. And I didn't, I didn't really know what a mug was at 13. Like I, was, I understood what it meant, but I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. And then I found this karate school and that was the best thing in the world for me wow. because it was all about it wasn't about that I wanted to learn how to fight, it was also it was about learning this internal struggle between oneself as a man to feel to feel confident, to feel brave, to feel like you could be a protector. Hell yeah. You know, and I grew up with just my, my mum and my two sisters and we didn't grow up in a rough neighborhood, so I didn't need to learn how to fight for that, but it was more like for my own self esteem, my own self respect as a man. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was my why. And my oh, yeah. why drove me so deep that when I started karate and then after a few years of karate I found Muay Thai. And I started doing Muay Thai and karate, and then I got like a second degree black belt in karate. And when I was 19, I was like, I think I want to do Muay Thai. So I stopped karate, I took the, the belt, the gi off, left that alone, took, wow. put the Thai boxing shorts on, and in 2000, joined a full-time fight gym. And, and it was all about, I didn't have any education at school, so it wasn't like going off to do this or this or this. I had no passions to be a guru or be a passion to be something else. Wow. It was just this internal warrior journey. Wow. So yeah. it wasn't even about anything other than the internal, the internal journey of myself inside of me. It was driving me externally. So then it was first because of that, then it was like, then I started fighting, not just because I enjoyed that. There was nothing else I enjoyed to do. Yeah. Even though I was scared every time, I wanted to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. So I walked to the ring like, oh, okay. And, I'm like, Let's do it. and I remember after 10 fights, I'm like, I'm not doing this. I don't know why I do this to myself. And then I win that fight. When's the next fight? Yeah. The 20th uh, fight, I'm like, I'm done with this fighting. And then I win that fight. When's the next fight? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm like, world champion. I'm like, oh shit, now I'm world champion. You know, and just like That's keeps crazy. going, keeps going. So then, then I wanted to be great. So then I wanted to not be an average person. I wanted to strive for greatness. I was like, you know, I don't want to just like do this and be okay. I don't want to be like, uh, you never, when you say I want to be great, I want to like be known to be the greatest. When you're young, you don't really know how to really say that to yourself, but that's where you're kind of wanting to go. Yeah. You're like, I'm gonna be a world champion one day. You're like, no, you know what? I'm just gonna win this fight. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could be a champion. Uh, people who say, I'm gonna be a world champion, like, settle down, slow down. Yeah. <laughs> just just get through the next the next, right. the next day. Right, right. Too many people talk, 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 and they always fall over. Because they just, 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 
believe in yourself, but believe as you go. Mm -hmm. Believe as you grow. As you grow. As you yeah, grow, that's, start that's to believe. A, you know, believe as you grow that you can achieve more. And believe more as you grow and as you achieve more. But don't go, okay, I'm going to go there. And you're already here. You're like, yeah. yeah. You, need you haven't even grow, walked yet. You haven't in. even crawled yet. Like, All what are you that. talking about? Damn, that's crazy. You know? When you take your why and you turn it into being a world champion. <sighs> yeah. Hey. Dude, thank you, bro. Thank you yeah. for no, these good. lessons. We got to do good. this again. Yeah. Honestly, we need to come back. So that was my. That's, that was the a deep why driving factor. You know? yeah. And uh, now my biggest passion um, is to is to teach the the art of of Muay Thai, but more or less the the mindset around like 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 achieving, winning, mm -hmm. like you know just winning. That's why I'm aggressive in my teachings. I want people to feel. That ignite that power inside them, that switch. You're just like, wow, let's go. But then you just yeah. apply that to whatever. But then, 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 you, then you smile. You know, you treat people kindly. Like I never had a street fight. You know, I'm not a violent yeah, person. Yeah, you turn that switch off. You know, it's just like it's just a switch. All it is is an activating switch to achieve greatness. It's got nothing to do with hurting people or being the toughest guy on the block. Because there is no tough guys at the end of the day. There's always someone tougher. Yep. The beauty thing about what we're doing is it's a martial art. It's not just a, a violent sport of like hitting things and bashing things and the, the thought of knocking people out. It's about learning this skillful art form. And of course it's violent, but it's done in a ring with both people saying, yes, we want this, yes, we want that. That's why I got the 11 world tiles because I was like, I'm going for greatness. I'm not just going for, for blood, okay? But in, but in going for greatness, I'm gonna cause blood, I'm gonna cause trauma, I'm gonna cause knockouts, and I'm gonna cause a lot of damage to my opponent. If not, they're gonna cause that to me, so therefore I have to be ready. My uh, early days, I started doing Muay Thai, and I saw the elbow strike, I said, if you're not using this elbow, you're an idiot. Like, yeah. it's the best weapon you've got in Muay Thai. So then I started using the, the elbow early in my fight career, started knocking people out, beating world champions with elbows before I was a world champion. Won my first world title with an elbow, this overhand, whack, hit the guy in the nose, knocked him out cold. And then, the, and then the magazine come out, the man with the golden elbows. So that's when I got dubbed the man with the golden elbows back in, so the, like yeah, in 2004. So then I just went on a rampage for like uh, 15 years, but 10 years as a world champion undefeated. Um, and doing a lot of damage with elbows over those years, you know, so that's why I was known as Carnage and the elbow man and the, you know, the, the, probably the best cruiserweight to heavyweight Muay Thai Westerner um, ever, that ever fought, so, so that's, that's why I'm passionate about teaching elbows because it's, you know, it created my whole yeah. legacy, it, yeah. it gave me a legacy, it created my name.